Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here. In this video, we will talk about the lipoproteins and the classification and the characteristics of lipoproteins. So, coming to the classification of lipoproteins, there are five major types of lipoproteins. First of all, what is a lipoprotein? Lipoprotein is a combination of lipid and proteins. Okay, because we are already studied lipids are insoluble in nature. So, when we have ingested, we have consumed them in the diet, in the form of diet, when they undergo digestion and absorption and for the transportation being insoluble in nature, how they transport? So, for that we need a carrier protein. So, here that carrier protein is in combination with lipid and protein. So, that's why they are named as lipoproteins. So, there are five major types of uh, lipoproteins. One is chylomicron. Okay, and other one is very low density lipoprotein, VLDL. And the third one intermediate density lipoprotein IDL and low density lipoprotein LDL. Here IDL is the intermediate form between VLDL to LDL. When VLDL is converting into LDL there is an intermediate form that is known as intermediate density lipoprotein and the last one that is high density lipoprotein. Right. So these are the five major lipoproteins that do exist in our body and each one of the lipoprotein characteristically different and in composition wise Structure wise, they vary. Right. So, here I have given some of the points like thylomicron, if you take, contains apoprotein B48. So, the protein, the major protein that present in thylomicron is apo B48, and VLDL it is having apoprotein B100, and LDL is having uh, apo B100, okay, again, and high density lipoprotein is having apo A. So, these are the variations in respect to the proteins that are carrying on over their structure. Okay, and the type of lipid they are transporting, okay, it is also very, if suppose you take thylomicrons, exogenous triglycerides, that means the diet which is having the triglycerides will be digested, absorbed and for transportation, they take the help of thylomicrons and from here they will take an extra hepatic tissues to the liver, okay. And very low density lipoproteins, uh, that means it will transport low, I mean what to say, it will transport endogenously synthesized triglycerides. that means liver also can able to synthesize triglycerides. Those triglycerides will be transported by using this uh, carrier protein, very low density lipoprotein. And coming to the low density lipoprotein, okay, why I am not talking about IDL because it is an intermediate form of very low density lipoprotein to low density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein. So, directly I am talking about low density lipoprotein. Low density lipoprotein is a type of carrier protein which carries cholesterol that synthesized in the liver. Okay, to the extra hepatic tissues and high density lipoprotein is a carrier protein which collects the cholesterol from extra hepatic tissues and dump that collected cholesterol into the liver. So, this is a variation in function wise and what type of lipids they are carrying. And next thing is free fatty acids. Free fatty acids, uh, there is a limitation circulation, okay, that means the passing of free fatty acids in the circulation. They are in, in combination with albumin because fatty acids also lipids, they are insoluble, they cannot freely movable in the circulation. So, they are always in combination with albumin. That's why these are not included in classification of lipoproteins because they are loosely bound to the albumin. And rest of the lipoproteins, they are tightly bound to the, they are parcel, uh, they are packed and part of the structure. Like apoprotein B48, apo B100, apo E. Okay, so like this. So, we will see the classification of lipoproteins by the two main methods. One is ultracentrifugation analytical methods, ultracentrifugation and electrophoresis. So, based on the weight, based on the size, okay, there will be segregation of these lipoproteins, right. So, you see here, free fatty acids are molecular weight wise, free fatty acids are heavy. So, they will sediment first, ultracentrifugation and next is HDL, okay, and the third one is uh, LDL, next is IDL, VLDL and the last one is chylomicron because they are light, chylomicron and chylomicrons are light in nature. Okay, they are the last substance to be sediment. Okay, their density is less, but free fatty acid density is high, so that's why they will go into the bottom first. And electrophoresis here, based on the charge, we are all seeing phospholipids, they are negatively charged, okay, which are present. So, cholesterol is also negatively charged. Okay, so how they move in an electric field? So, from negative to positive side, first free fatty acids and they will move to positive side. HDL will move next and VLDL, IDL, LDL and thylomicron. Okay, thylomicron, they doesn't have much cholesterol. Okay, so they are less negatively charged. Okay, though they can, that's why they cannot move much towards the positive side. Okay, so free fatty acids having a, a negative charge. So, here negative charges will attract. 
So that's why fatty acids will go towards the positive side. So comparison size wise, you see thylomicron is bigger in size. Okay, and very low density lipoprotein and uh, intermediate density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. So here the colors, different colors I have used here. Okay, orange, yellow, pale blue and thick blue. Okay, I will show you why the colors has been used here. Okay, here in the flow, I mean in the distribution, chart distribution, the colors you see here. Yellow color is a triglyceride. Okay, and blue color, I mean pale blue color is protein and thick blue color is phospholipid and orange is cholesterol. So when you see thylomicron, okay, 90% it is made up of triglycerides. Okay, so in the function aspect we have discussed thylomicron will carry exogenous triglycerides from the stain to liver, okay, via photocirculation. And very low density lipoprotein, so here the combination you can see here and yes, when you see the composition of thylomicron, triglycerides are 90%, Okay, 2% of phospholipids and 3% of protein as it is made up of I amino mean, 48 protein. Okay, and 5% cholesterol. And coming to very low density lipoprotein, 20% by cholesterol, 60% by triglycerols, and 15% by protein and 5% by phospholipids. And the same way, low density lipoprotein, if you talk about 22% is uh, protein and 50% cholesterol, 8% is triglycerides and 20% uh, phospholipids. High density lipoproteins here when it is synthesized doesn't have, well, it is having much cholesterol content compared to the triglyceride concentration and 40% is rich of phospholipids and 30% of protein. Okay, so HDL protein content and cholesterol content is much more compared with the other lipoproteins. So in this table column here like density of chylomicrons, VLDL, IDL, LDL, HDL we have given and the diameter, composition, protein, how much, I mean, how many proteins are there, okay, and then PAG composition, phospholipid, percentage, cholesterol, two fatty acid, apoproteins, what are the apoproteins, chylomicrons, you see, apoprotein A, B48, C2, E will be there, in case of VLDL, apo B100, apo C and 2 and E will be there, in case of IDL, B100 and E is there, LDL, apo B100 is there, HDL, apoprotein A1, C, E is there, in case of uh, free fatty acid albuminosa. So the type of apoproteins they are carrying, it has got huge importance, okay, because of the deficiency of these proteins, lipoproteins will be deficient and in the fall shorter of the function. So the function you see, TAG from gut to muscle, okay, and VLDL, TAG from liver to muscle, and LDL, cholesterol from liver to peripheral tissues, and HDL, cholesterol from peripheral tissues to liver, and free fatty acid from fat depot to muscle and liver. So these are all the functional structural and characterizational classification okay all the lipoproteins in a single table so characteristics if you see here apoproteins and their functions apoa1 is a component of hdl2 and what is the role of apoa1 here apoa1 involved in activation of enzyme okay that is lcat which is also acting as a ligand for hdl receptor and anti atherogenic apoa1 is having okay and molecular weight of this apoa1 protein is 28000 and uh, the site of production is intestine is liver because it is a protein it has to be synthesized so the site of production is intestine and liver and apoa2 is present in hdl3 it inhibits lcat and stimulates lipase so that means more pag has to be hydrolyzed and molecular weight is 17000 daltons and it is also produced in intestine and liver apoa b100 is present in both ldl and vldl it binds to ldl receptor its molecular weight is uh, quite high 550000 okay and it is present in liver, okay, it is produced in liver. Apo B48 is present in thylomicrons, 48% size of B100 and its molecular weight half of the Apo B100, 250,000 and it is present, in, it is also produced in intestine. Apo C1 is also part of thylomicron yielding structure, it is also involved in activation of LCAT, okay, and its molecular weight is 7000 Daltons, it is also produced in liver cells. So again, APOC2 is a component of same like uh, thylomicrons and VLDL. APOC3 is also thylomicron and VLDL. Okay, they are all like involved in activation of extra hepatic lipoprotein lipase in vessels and also inhibit in LCAT and stimulating in the lipase and molecular weight is 28,000 and 17,000 dollars correspondingly. And side of production is intestine. APOB100 is also LDL, VLDL and thylomicrons, arginine rich and ligand for hepatic uptake. Its molecular weight is 30,000 dollars. It is also produced in liver. And EPO-LPA is attached to B100 and impairs fibrinolysis. Okay, it impairs fibrinolysis and highly heterogenic. 
So how these apo proteins are producing? You see here, apo being protein in nature, apo B48 and apo B100 are produced from the same gene in liver. The mRNA is translated as B100 gene. Okay, B100 mRNA. But in intestine, a stop codon is generated in the middle and a short protein is produced in intestine B48. Apo B48 is only 48% of the size of B100. Okay, B100, B48 both are produced from the same gene. Okay, and the corresponding mRNA is named as B100. But in intestine, what is happening? In, instead of while producing of Apo B100, there is a stop code that is coming in the middle. So that's why instead of synthesizing the complete length of Apo B100, it will be synthesized 48%. So that's why it is known as Apo B48. You see here, intestine stop code is coming in the middle. So that's why Apo B48 is produced. In case of liver, there is a complete size of protein Apo B100. U, there is a stop code on U. So that's all about chylomicrons classification and their characteristics and uh, how these epoproteins are produced. Thanks for watching. Thank you.